Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, what's up? My name is Vina Strick. Thank you so much for being here. As you can see by the title today, I'm just gonna be trying out a bunch of brand new makeup from the drugstore. A lot of these products are pretty popular, very hyped up and viral on TikTok. So I'm excited to put them all on my face today and give you guys my review and let you know if it's actually worth your money and worth the hype. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. And if you do, you know what to do. Please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to join my squad. Let's get into it. We have a lot to go through, so let's just get into it. I think I'm gonna start out with the eyes today, and I do have eyeshadow palette as well as an eyebrow product. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in and we can get started. Okay, so for brows, I'm actually really excited. Um, we're gonna be trying out something from NYX. So this is the NYX Thick It Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara. So if you guys don't know, my favorite brow gel at the moment and for the longest time now is the NYX Brow Glue. Obviously this is gonna be like a tinted one because I did get it in the shade Brunette. So I kinda wanna see what the deal is if it's actually like kind of like the brow glue. So I'm just gonna run this through my brows and see what we can do with it and see if it also is gonna be thickening my eyebrows. Okay, so that is one coat on the brow. As you can see, it definitely filled my brows in. I actually do like the way it filled it in. I'm gonna say the Brow gel is definitely nothing like the brow glue. It's not gooey whatsoever. As much as I wanted it to be, I still actually do like how this product looks because it filled my eyebrows really quickly. It did kind of push them up a little bit. Definitely more of a natural look, not as dramatic as a brow glue could get you to. It was like a really easy brow to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other brow and show you guys what it looks like. The only thing I'm not loving is just the wand. It is, I don't know, I don't know if this is big or not, but I'm just so used to the brow glue wand that is tiny that now wands this big are kind of hard for me to use. But the first brow, there was no issue. So, you know, I just think it'll take a little bit of practice. Okay, so this is what the brows look like. By the way, I am gonna be doing a wear test. Tonight is date night, and so I figured I would just leave this makeup on and show you guys what it looks like at night. So for eyes, I ended up buying the brand new NYX Ultimate Queen palette, and it came completely shattered. So for the sake of the video, I do have a new eyeshadow palette. Um, I have the new Bite Size shade. So this is in the shade I love you a latte, and I thought this looked really, really pretty. Obviously, it's very basic, but basic is the way to go, baby, most of the times. This is what it looks like. So this one is all matte, and it has like your cream, your transition, something to deepen it with, and the darkest shade. And so I think this would actually be a really nice palette for a lot of people. So I'm gonna prime really quickly with some concealer, and I guess instead of setting this with a translucent powder, I'm just gonna use that cream shade from the palette. Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm gonna grab this cream shade and I'm just going to go ahead and set that. These two shades are very similar. Uh, they're both like medium tone shades. One's just cooler. So I'm first gonna go in with the cooler shade and I'm just gonna put this all over the crease. It's not gonna be like an elaborate look. I just wanna see, wow, that was pigmented. I just wanna see the formula. Wow, that shade was a lot more pigmented than I thought. And you know what, with the same brush, I'm just gonna grab this one and just go over it. Because like I said, these shades are very similar. I'm just gonna create like a very diffused eyeshadow look. But so far, so good. I mean, I expected nothing less. I do think that the shades come off darker on the eyes that they look on the pan. So if you're wondering that, now you know. With a smaller blending brush, now I'm gonna start packing in that dark brown to really create a lot of depth. Depth, depth, I can't say that word, depth. See how pigmented these are? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna go back and forth with my crease brush just to diffuse it. I wasn't planning on going this dark, but really really good pigment and so far everything's blending so beautifully and now with a flat brush I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cream shade and just brighten the eye and just blend the edges now with a little flat brush I'm just gonna grab that brown again and I'm just gonna stamp it on the lash line since I don't have a new eyeliner I'm gonna use this as eyeliner just to make it a little bit darker and lastly, I'm just going to grab a makeup wipe and clean off the edges. Okay, so very, very impressed. Like I said, I'm not like surprised, but I just, 
I just love e.l.f. and this looks so beautiful. I genuinely think that this would work for a lot of you guys as an everyday palette. Like I mentioned, I know it is lighter, you know, it might not work that well for deeper skin tones, but I will say they do come off a little bit darker on the eyelids. So take that with a grain of salt, but love it, love it, love it, love it. So let's move on to mascara. I'm so excited. I love trying new mascaras. So this is the Maybelline New York Colossal Curl Bounce Mascara. So this is supposed to give big volume, bouncy curl up to 24 hour wear. And guys, per usual, I'm going to curl my lashes. Okay, so like always, I'm gonna go ahead and do two coats on one eye to show you guys like a before and after. I really like the packaging. It is very interesting looking. Let me give you guys a close up of the brush. Oh, hmm, I don't really like that brush. <laughs> this is what it looks like. It definitely reminds me of the Colossal Brush Mascara. It's just um, like curved and I can see that the brush is still yellow. So I'm gonna make sure I get as much mascara on it as possible. So let's go ahead and apply some mascara on the eyes. Okay, so that is one coat. It definitely lengthened and added a little bit of volume, but it's more natural to me. Um, but usually with the second coat, that's kind of when you get the most out of a mascara, but this is coat number one. Let's go ahead and let it dry for a minute and then we can do coat number two. Okay, so this is coat number two and it definitely, definitely gave me length and separation. What I think is lacking for me is like volume. The actual formula is really dry. I like really pushed it into my lashes because my lashes aren't really grabbing the mascara as much because I don't know if the brush isn't saturated enough or if just the overall formula is a little bit thinner and drier but this is what it looks like. It definitely gave me like a pretty wispy look. It's not my favorite. There's just so many mascaras at the drugstore that I do prefer. So I wouldn't repurchase this, but if you like this like natural wispy look, then you might like it. Alrighty guys, so we have mascara on. Um, yeah, I did like three coats on this eye and it just didn't do much. So that's gonna be a no for me. Let's move on to the face. I do have two primers to try. I have the e.l.f. Power Grip as well as the NYX little plump finish with electrolytes. So let's start out with this. So again, this is the NYX plump finish with electrolyte setting spray. On the back, it says use on bare skin for all day plump looking skin and use over makeup to keep it fresh all day. So I figured we could try this on the face first. Oh my God. Oh my God. That sprayer is violent. Jesus. I don't think you can tell, but I'm soaking wet. I am soaking wet. Um, Okay, so I don't know if I would actually want to put this on when I have makeup on because that sprayer was like, just like really freaking aggressive. Um, but it smells nice. It does have a fragrance, not too, too much fragrance. And my skin feels really nice. It feels even a little bit tacky from that hydration. So that feels good. So, so far, so good. It kind of gave me a glow, so. Okay, Okay. so let's move on to what you're really here for. So this is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. Um, it says apply evenly to face before makeup using fingertips to pat into the skin. Um, allow 30 seconds to set before applying makeup. So the only thing that I'm wondering is what the difference is between this and the e.l.f. Mint Melt Cooling Primer. I personally don't love the Jelly Pop Primer. To me, that's like way, 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 way too sticky. But I remember the e.l.f. Mint Melt Primer. It was much like it, but it wasn't as sticky. So I guess let's just try this out. I really like the packaging and the color. It kind of reminds me of like toothpaste. And like, I don't, why do I like that? I don't know. Oh, look at that. So this is two pumps. Looks exactly like the e.l.f. Mint Melt. Doesn't really smell like anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to the skin. Okay, so, so far it feels just like the mint melt. So it's like really thick and it is sticky, but you can spread it out easily. For me, the Jelly Pop, it was almost like too sticky to spread out, but this is actually spreading out pretty nicely. So I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes as intended and we can see how it looks. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Obviously, I mean, I look, I look like glass. So if you want glass skin, we could just Put this on so my skin is pretty sticky so you know i like it it's nice and sticky it's not super thick so it's a thin layer but it does add that grip 
and it feels nice. It's a little bit cooling. So right now I really do like it and it's affordable and I like the pump. All right, so moving on to foundation. Today we're gonna be trying out this one. I've gotten a lot of you guys asking me to try the new uh, Maybelline foundation as well as a concealer, so I do have both. So this is the Maybelline Super Stay Active Wear 30 Hour Foundation. I got the shade 312 Golden Door. Golden Doré, I don't know. This obviously looks exactly like the Maybelline Super Stay Foundation, but this is called the Active Wear Foundation. On the back it says, uh, up to 30 hour wear, full coverage, light as air, transfer resistant, seamless matte finish, oil free. So I'm not sure what the difference is other than light as air feel so maybe this is just a little bit thinner of a formula than the other one so i guess we'll find out let's hope this matches my neck i also do have this brand new sponge from elf this is called the elf angled silicone face sponge so you can use the angle sides for conceal and contour and then the bottom is silicone dip so it's supposed to be for foundation um, i believe this silicone tip is not gonna like absorb as much foundation. This is definitely runnier than the other one, the other Superstay. The other Superstay is a little bit more of a cream. This is like in between a cream and a liquid, which for me, I like. Okay, um, I don't like this. Do you guys hear this? It feels like like plastic, I'm, I don't like this at all. I've never really liked like silicone sponges like this. So, um, you know, I figured I would give this one a try though. I do like this sponge though. It's really nice and fluffy. So I think I'm gonna like this more for actual concealer, but the foundation, it feels weird and it feels like unnatural and I don't wanna judge this foundation off of that. So I'm gonna use a brush to blend this out because so far it's actually looking really nice. So, so far, loving it. It's giving me kind of like L'Oreal Infallible vibes. I know I said that with the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop, but that one was a lot more matte. This so far, even though it's a matte finish, it doesn't feel drying at all. Obviously, I am wearing the Power Grip primer, which probably helps with that. So far, I'm really, really loving that consistency. It's a nice in-between of a liquid and a cream, and it feels very lightweight on the skin. Okay. I will say... I'm looking really yellow on camera. I don't know what is going on. I mean, it matches my neck perfectly, but I didn't realize my neck was as yellow. Anywho, let me look at it up close. It looks super nice. It looks full coverage, yet super lightweight. So far, I'm actually liking this a little bit more than the NYX Can't Stop Bones Up. Obviously, we'll see with the wear test, but I am loving it. It went on the skin perfectly. It doesn't look heavy, and I guess we'll just have to see how it wears, but so far, it is looking flawless, and I'm actually wondering why not more people are talking about this. So hopefully, this wears really well. All right, so moving on to concealer. Again, this is the concealer that goes with the foundation. So this one is called the Maybelline Superstay Active Wear up to 30 hours, and I got the shade 27. This is supposed to be a 30 hour wear, second skin full coverage, transfer resistant natural matte finish. So very similar to the foundation. Oh my God, why is this applicator so freaking tiny? This is gonna take me forever, wait. <laughs> what the heck? And I'm gonna go ahead and brighten my skin because I am looking yellow again. Why is this happening to me? This feels really, really thin. Like it doesn't feel thick at all. So it's kind of like the same vibes as the foundation. Very, very thin formula. I don't understand what the active wear is. Like, is it supposed to be for like working out? I don't know. Or maybe it's just if you're like an active person. It didn't really highlight very much. Again, this is very, very thin consistency, but let's go ahead and blend it from the under eyes. I already don't like the sponge. I like the feel of it, but it doesn't have an actual point. So it feels very weird. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Um, It looks pretty and it's very thin, but I don't think it's full coverage, so I am gonna try to build it up um, just to see if it's buildable. I do like it, I do think it's really nice. I'm just thinking about the claims. Does it look like second skin? Yes. Is it full coverage? Not yet. Okay, so I zoomed you guys in again. It's not the most full coverage concealer, but it is a lot of coverage for how thin it is, so I do like that. I do think it looks 
really nice. It doesn't look cakey. I still see a lot of darkness though, so I would say this is a medium coverage, but it's more of a lightweight medium coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this with a powder. I'm gonna use my go-to powder, which is the She Glam Powder Duo. And really at this point is just about how it wears, but so far I do like it, but I definitely don't think it's full coverage. I think the foundation is a lot more full coverage. I do think other concealers do look better under my eyes and I'm trying to set it right here and for some reason it's like, instead of setting, it's kind of moving around. So it is a little bit patchy in my inner corners, on both inner corners. I don't know if that has to do with this sponge with a square on the top, but so far I'm definitely more impressed with the foundation rather than the concealer. So let's move on to setting powder. I wasn't gonna put these in this video, but I got them in PR literally right before I started filming. They are the little, what are these called? The Butter Buddies from Physicians Formula. So I do have two setting powders, a brightening powder as well as a bronzer. They did send me the whole collection, but the darker bronzer and the blush came broken, which was really sad. But I do have a mattifying power as well as an illuminating powder. So I figured we could try like one on each side of the face. First, I'm gonna use the translucent matte mattifying powder. So I'm gonna use this to just set my face. I guess I'll just use my powder puff to set my face. I don't usually, oh my God, wait. This is not translucent, wait. I need a brush, I need a brush. Okay, so definitely better with a brush. So it set my face really nicely. It doesn't look drying and I still see some luminosity going through. So I wonder how the other one's gonna look. So, so far this looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna use the illuminating powder, which I'm kind of worried. I hope it's not like highlighty and do the same on the other side. Ooh, I do not like that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Do you guys see a difference? This is the illuminating side. And this is the matte side. I don't really see a difference other than I just see my texture way more on this side because it's illuminating, but it didn't give me that much of an illumination on my face for this texture to be worth it. So they're just not like wow to me, but if I were to pick one, I guess I do prefer the mattifying powder. It just looks obviously a little bit more smoother, but so far I'm just not that impressed. But let's try out the um, brightening powder. Well, it's called the banana powder. I didn't want to set my under eyes with this, but I wanted to see if I could use it as a brightening powder. I'm just going to apply it under one eye to see if it makes a difference. Do we see a difference? I can't keep putting on more powder though because this is going to get super cakey, but hmm, I don't see much of a difference. I'm not going to lie. It is brightening a little bit. I can definitely tell more in person rather than on camera, but in person it's kind of looking ashy on me, so I'm not really loving it. I, ugh, I don't know. I feel like I'm trying out so many products that I don't want the foundation or concealer to look super cakey because of all these powders, but my under eyes look super crepey right now. So, um, so far I'm not liking these powders, unfortunately. I do have the bronzer though. Again, the deeper one that I would prefer was broken. So I do have this light one. It's probably too light for me. This is the Butter Buddy Bronzer, but I'm going to go ahead and just try this out and see what we can do. And if not, I'll just apply another bronzer. I'm like wondering what the difference is between this and like the Butter Bronzer. It's giving me something, but it's definitely too light. I will say it is kind of illuminating. So it looks really pretty. I really wish I could try out the deeper shade. Right now, this is going on my face pretty nicely. It's giving me luminosity, but it's not, you know, making my texture come out, so that's really nice. So I do actually really like this product. I think if you have a um, lighter skin tone, you might really like this. Yeah, this is just not my shade, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use a deeper shade, 
and apply some blush and then I'll come back so we can finish out this makeup look. Okay, I'm back. So I have to say I'm not that impressed with those powders. The only one that I really liked was the bronzer. If you do want a little bit of more of a luminous bronzer, I think it's really pretty as you can see that glow. So let's finish out the under eyes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off the eyeshadow. I'm just gonna grab the two crease shades and blow it out on my lower lash line and then kind of deepen it out with the darker shade. And then of course I will be applying mascara on my bottom lashes. So for setting spray, um, e.l.f. actually came out with a new one. So this is the Stay All Day Blue Light Micro Setting Mist. So I personally love just the regular one, the Stay All Night Micro Setting Mist, but this one is Stay All Day blue light micro setting mist. So on the back it says this is a lightweight makeup setting spray that absorbs blue light infused with skin loving aloe and elderflower extract that keeps the makeup fresh with a matte shine free finish. I don't really know what the difference is other than the blue light absorbing. This one doesn't say it has a matte finish but this one does so I guess it's gonna have a matte finish. The mister is the same, but it kind of has a Play-Doh-y kind of smell, so I don't love that. But it's not that like noticeable, I just didn't really like the smell of that. But it did set my face beautifully, I mean, I don't really know what the difference is. It might make my face maybe a little bit more matte. I don't know, I guess it'll absorb all the blue light. I like it, it looks nice, but um, I feel like the safe bet would probably be this one. Alrighty guys, I am back. I did add a little bit of inner corner highlight, so... Let's go ahead and talk about the products. I think so far my favorite product is probably the foundation, the eyeshadow from e.l.f. as well as the Hydro Grip Primer as well as this bronzer. This looked really, really pretty. I wish it was darker. So, so far these are the best products. The other ones didn't surprise me as much. Oh, you know what? I am really liking this. It did give me a nice like feathered filled in look. So it really just depends on how it wears. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wear this for the rest of the day. It is 4 p.m. right now, so I can give you guys kind of like a six hour wear test. I will see you guys in a couple hours and let you guys know what I think, but so far I am really liking my makeup, so I will see you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, so it's been about six hours. It's about 10.30, so six and a half hours, and this is what the makeup is looking like. So honestly, I am really, really loving this foundation. It wore beautifully. I actually got some compliments for my makeup today. I also want to say that this brow gel is actually really nice. As you guys can see, my brows are still intact and there was a lot of wind and nothing nothing went anywhere and the eyeshadow looks great honestly everything looks great so i am pretty happy about the foundation as well as the brow gel it wore beautifully so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful thank you guys so much for watching i love you guys so much and i will see you guys in my next video bye